pay this price for. It's a mistake. I don't want to rub it in. But here's what I've started to think about in, in the light of all the things I'm talking about today, and that is this. Um, we all have our own clock. We all have our own temple. People say, you know, you march to the beat. People, he marched to the beat of a di different drummer. She marches to the, you know, they don't. What that means is you don't line up with the program. You don't line up with time. I was listening to Mikey um, on a keyboard when we were rehearsing Saturday, and I, I noticed something about where you fall tempo-wise. And I don't know if you're aware of it, but you have a speed if you start a song that you will kind of default to. It's your groove, it's your flow. And I'm gonna have to say, that's too slow, that's too fast. And then I realized something. Since I've been seriously practicing and learning how to play the drums more, and I have a, a, a electronics at home, I put on my headphones and play. I've been playing with a metronome. Now I thought, really, that I was a great timekeeper as a drummer, and people have always told me, yo, you don't have all the flash, but boy, you have timing. And I thought that I did, until I put the metronome on. See, the metronome is a computer. It's not human. And it knows what's right and what's wrong. And a metronome, like a level, will bring all your beliefs to challenge. You know, you can put a picture on the wall, and I think it's straight. My wife would say, no, lean it that way. I'm like, no, I think it needs to go that way. No, it needs to go to, nah, a little bit to the left, a little bit right. And you take the level, the level solves that argument. That little bubble shuts up all the talking and believing and feeling and emotion and everything else. Right, that little bubble in that liquid shuts up everybody. Am I, am I telling the truth? It's there for that reason. You know, you can argue about whether your instrument is in pitch or not. But when you hit that A440, that solves everything. Because that tuning fork says this is right, regardless of how emotionally strong you feel about it. How, how convinced and convicted you are about it, there's always something that's to stabilize it. It brings the truth out. It shuts everything up. The problem is people don't want to listen to the tuning fork. They don't want to get the level. They don't want to look at the map. You know, women say that about the men. You know, they don't want to look. I know where I'm going. They'd rather get lost than take direction. <laughs> Old running joke, right? Here's the thing. I, there's one of the things with the metronome. There's a uh, tester. And when you put it on, not only does it click, it has this little meter and it's an arrow in the middle. And when you're right perfect, it, it's there, and if you're too fast, it moves this way, and if it's too slow, it goes that way. Oh, this is going to be a cinch. I'm timing due. <laughs> and the first time I did the test, it said average. I was like, no, but brother's not average. I keep good time. We're going to do this test again. And I did it again, and still, I was average. 60%. No. I'm not average when it comes to timing. Are you listening to what I'm saying today? Yeah. I know what I know. This thing is wrong. <laughs> I know. I focus. I work on being an excellent in my timekeeping. This is wrong. So I did it again this time. I said, well, I don't believe this thing, but let me just try to obey what it says and line up with the, with the timing that it says is correct. You know, because I'm still right. <laughs> but let me at least humor this machine and try to line up with it. And I did, and what I discovered was by going by the metronome, what I thought was right was playing a little bit slower than what I was playing. Mike, you bear, you, you bear witness, right? It, it, no matter what I thought, I was doing what was right. The machines were saying, you're just a little too fast. Your, your thought of what right timing is is a little bit off. Are you listening to me today? Yeah. It's just a little bit off. It, 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 I was average. It didn't say you suck. It says you're average. And I thought I was great. How many of us are walking around average, but we really think we're great? How many of us think highly or more highly of ourselves, as the Bible said, than we should? We think we're better than we actually are, and we're not willing to be corrected or chastised or put in place or challenged by something that makes us face the fact that we're not as great as we think we are. 
We don't, we don't want nobody to, mm, mm, as long as I've been living here, you don't tell me. Well, that machine was telling me, it didn't care if I was 56. It didn't even ask my age. It just said, you average. Didn't want my opinion. You hit that timer and you turned on that thing, you getting the results. And the results is you average. Wow. So I started working. I never got it to excellent, but I did get to good. I got to the place that I wasn't average. I was good. And, and, and I still felt some kind of way about that because, <laughs> because it bothered me that all this time I thought I was excellent and people agreed with me. They thought it was. So I've come to the realization there needs to be a gauge, there needs to be a gauge meter. And that gauge meter for us is the word of God. And when we examine ourselves against the word of God, sometimes it makes us feel uncomfortable. Sometimes it makes us feel out of place. Sometimes it makes us feel less than average. Sometimes it makes us feel bad. Sometimes it makes us feel like we're not keeping time at all, that we're not even on the right beat with God. And so what we'd rather do is not look at this gauge because this gauge makes us feel uncomfortable. So we just throw this gauge away and we start to say, well, I just know that God loved me and I love God and God. God knows my heart. And we come up with these counterfeit sayings to not have to face the gauge. Got one person, Sam, excited. So I've been challenged myself now to look at scriptures that always made me uncomfortable. Is there, is there one that makes you, anybody that you know what it is? That, yeah, well, every time I hear that one, I kind of go like, oh, God. I love all the rest of the Bible, but can I just skip that one right there, that one right there? Ooh. Anybody other than me? Let me see here. We know we got that one that we just, I don't want to hear uh, that one. Why? Because that one makes me feel uncomfortable. But it's there to challenge your sense of how good you are and to help you practice and get it into perfection so you can go from being bad to being average to being good. If I keep practicing, it'll be excellent, but I will have to practice. I will have to practice. I'm not going to say, in Jesus' name, my plan and my timing is excellent. Next time I pick up the sticks, amen. No, because the machine is going to say, well, you can pray all you want. This is the timing that's set. And unless you practice being better, you're not going to be better. Now, I'm not talking about the work of the flesh, but I am talking about the process of submitting the flesh. And submitting the flesh is a process. It's a work. Because the flesh always wants to go to its own timing. It's comfortable with that timing. It knows that timing well. And so it flows with that timing. That doesn't make you bad or evil intent. Did that make sense? Doesn't make your, are you listening to me? Doesn't make your intention evil, but it does mean there's evil there. And that evil that's there forces or, or fights to have its way. It, 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 it's not going down without a fight, if that makes sense. It's, it's not going to just say, okay, you want to do good, I surrender, I back off. That, that, that will, that will of the flesh, that those thoughts that seek to exalt themselves above the knowledge of Christ, they're going to fight to be the winner, even if it makes you a loser. You've gotten to arguments with people with situations, and you know that it's just back off, leave it alone, let it go. And that pride said no, and at the end of it, you lost. And you knew you should have kept your mouth shut. You knew you should have walked away. You know you should have just let it go and just take what seemed like a loss in, 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 in the world. But in your spirit, you would have walked away with peace. Amen. That relationship that you should have just ended and let it go. And you know you should have just ended it and let it go. But your strong will to be right helped on to it totally demolished you till you had no choice but to let it go because there was nothing left to hold on to. So now you leave broken and you leave wounded, and God is still good in that. He'll bring you through. But he's saying, you know, there's a lot that you don't have to go through if you just let me gauge you. Amen. So as I was looking through, the, finishing up the 2 Corinthians 10, 
these things began to become real to me. And one of the things I, I became real about, and, and, and I got some verses today, but I'm just going to be led by the Spirit and see where it goes and see how God, if he leads me to go here. I keep wanting to read, but I keep feeling like, no, explain what I'm showing you about this timing, about this, about this gauge, about this metronome. And, and, and what I saw was this about me. See, I love to stand here and talk about me. So you know what I'm saying? I'm not one of the pastors stand here and talk about you. I talk about me. And if it messes with you too, then good. You got it. But I'm going to tell you what, how God's checking me. Amen. So here's what I found out. I found like I was going through some things. I was going through some things financially. I was going through, you know, not, not dead, but just I'm not used to being tight financially. And, you know, with the business, with the businesses like now in this, in this, this stage where something got to happen or else, and then the other business is, 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 is moving along but not fast enough. And, and I'm going, ah, oh, you know, I, I'm not used to, you know, you invested a lot of money and a lot of time, six years is a lot of time to invest into a business and money. And I'm going, okay, now you, uh, uh, I don't like this. And so I'm, you know, you know rebuking devils, you know. And, and binding the spirit and claiming prosperity is mine in Jesus' name. You, you know the stuff you're supposed to do, you know. You know the stuff you're supposed to do when you get set in your timing. When you got your little rhythm and your flow going. Uh, can we have this conversation? No, no. So I'm doing my thing and I'm praying to God earnestly, man. I'm praying, I'm praying to God from that heart of heart. You, you know what I mean? You, you know when you get real, real and even a little tear run down your face while you're doing it, that means you're really serious if a little tear comes down. You know, God got to move now because, you know, I got emotional when I prayed and put on the song and threw my hand up and worshiped. Oh, I felt the chill go through my body. None of that means nothing. Satan ain't moved by your tear and he ain't going to let go because you got emotional in your prayer time. Nor is that going to move God to feel something other than he's going to love you anyway. So you're not going to make him love you more by that. All, all that does is say, well, now you're sincere with a tear, but you, you can still be sincerely wrong. And it still ain't going to get an answer. See, <laughs> see it's, it's the gauge, the level, the word that, that is the equalizer. The Bible says he hearkens unto his word to perform it. It doesn't say he hearkens unto your prayers to perform it. Uh, I, maybe somebody needed to hear that today. It says he hearkens unto his word to perform it. God does not move because you pray. He moves because you pray his word correctly, and that's what he moves to. He doesn't move to the fact that you feel real emotional about it. All right, you're out there in the lobby. Don't make me come out there. So somebody got curious because you have to reach your finger in there to turn it off. So watch this now. Somebody said, what did this do? <laughs> See? See how people do? Now, watch this. The, 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 the whole sense of God hearkens to his word, I know that to be true. I know I've been real emotional and real distraught and cried and prayed and nothing happened, so I spoke his word. I know that's true. But I got a flow now. I've been walking with God a long time, so I got a flow. Can I have this conversation or what? Yes. I got a flow. I know what God responds to. I know how God answers my prayers. I don't have to do all that stuff. You all got to do it. I ain't got to do that because I got a flow now. You see, I got a temple now that I, I bounce to. I know me and God bounce with the same way to that temple. God, not like you. You like that, right? God, uh, uh, right? I, I, I know, I know, I know I got in my mind how I think God flow now. And, and, and then the metronome get on you, find out that you're just averaging your flow. You, 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 you put the word up against it and you found out that you and God ain't bouncing the same way no more. You, you were bouncing, but since you haven't been really locked into the metronome, you didn't got a little bit off. But you're still good with your bounce. Well, well. So I came to the realiza realization just as, as, as recently as Friday, God said to me, well, how are you standing? I said, I stand on the word you gave me. You gave me the word. My God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. I looked it up to make sure I was saying it right. Philippians 4.19. I got my word, God. He gave me the word. My God will supply my need according to his riches and glory. Bam, I got that. <clears throat> he said, so is that a memory verse or a sense of knowing for you? Well, I... I know that verse. How do you know it? 
I've read it a million times. We got a problem. Because now it's just something you quote and like, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep it. If I die before I wake. There's, there's, no, there's no heart com- connection to it anymore. You just know it as a line, and you figure you're going to throw that line out, and God's going to respond to it because you threw it out as a line. But God knows, and the demons know, and your spirit knows that you're not connected to it anymore because you've been out of time with that a while because you ain't been studying, you ain't sat before God with it. You just took the line and taped it to your refrigerator, and you think it's a magic wand or a magic word or a magic saying now that God has to hearken into because you taped it to your refrigerator or you set it out your mouth but you were no more connected to that word or what it means and how God meant it and what it meant to you before when God said it there's nothing attached to it anymore but you quoting it again this is what God said to me y'all can do what you want to do he said you before would have taken that scripture see when you were poor and you were broke and you were homeless, you would have taken that scripture, you would have found ten more that go with it, you would have found out in the Hebrew and the Greek how they come together and how they all match, and you would have had yourself a whole, what do you call it, a di- diorama uh, 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 of, of things that connect that thing together, and you would have made that yours personally. Now, you're just taking a line and throwing it on the wall because you know it. You're not intimate with it anymore. You don't have a relationship with it anymore. It don't mean anything to you but a magic phrase that you quote that you think puts me into some kind of bind that I got to do it. Yeah. Am I stepping on toes? Because yeah. I'm not getting no amens or nothing today. It's just silent. You got blank looks on your face. You're, you're looking like my body fails. Now, I woke up this morning coughing, choking, barely breathing. I don't remember the last time I had a cold, especially for no seven days. I was here, I'm Jesus' name, I received this. By his stripes I'm healed and made whole. It didn't work this time. I bind you sickness in the name of Jesus. I don't accept you. It didn't work this time. All, all the lines that I, I, I know so well, not working like they used to. Wow. They're still real. They're still true. But my connection to them doesn't exist anymore. I've gotten comfortable in my flow. I've gotten comfortable in my rhythm. I get comfortable going by feeling my own gauge. I don't need to put a level on it. I believe it's right because it feels right to me. I'm not allowing my spirit to be checked. I'm not allowing God to say to me, well, that did mean that to you then, but I have you here now, and I need to bring a new rhema to you, a new revelation of what I'm saying to you, and you're still trying to hold me to yesterday's blessing. You're still trying to say, I remember back in 1975 when God healed me from cancer. Well, okay, it's 2,000-something. Can we stop talking about that? What has he done for you since then? Can you, can, you, can you recite anything new other than what happened to you 15 years ago? And God said, my word says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And you living on, then faith. Am I helping somebody say amen or something? Amen. It's, come on now. So I even asked pastor have to get checked by God. God has to say to me, I don't like your attitude. I don't like the way you said that to that person. I said the right Christian thing. I said, God bless you. (laughs) Well, that's what you believe in. God bless you. I might as well say go bank yourself because it meant exactly the same thing in my heart, right? I said the right thing, but not from the right place. I don't want to talk to me right now. It wasn't the right spirit. It wasn't the right spirit. That spirit to gauge you, it put the level up against that. I said, that was real crooked. But it was the right thing to say. So now I'm being challenged in this season, and I would ask you, if this word has got you this quiet and this tight, (laughs) 
I would ask you to put the level up against you. Are you just quoting scriptures of days gone by that once worked for you, so you're just going to keep quoting them? Or are you allowing God to move you to the next level of your walk with him where he can give you new rhema, new revelation, and challenge you to a more better excellence so that when you quote this word again, it has fire again. It has power again. It has meaning. And you know how you know it has that? Because it has results. So I got an email from Kenneth Copeland inviting us to a crusade. And in there he said he wants to teach us about having freedom over dead victories. That caught my, that caught my attention. What the heck is a dead victory? So I said, I want to read this. And he explains a dead victory is those people who have been walking in the Lord. They confess in the scriptures about healing, but they're still sick. They're confessing the scriptures about prosperity. The victory is theirs in Christ Jesus, but they still broke and struggling to pay their bills. I'm like, ooh, this is what you're talking to me about right now. And I'm, I'm going to his convention, but I'm sure he's going to say the same thing. You ain't got so far away from the word, you're just going by what you remember. You're just quoting the scriptures that you know. You're using them like they catch phrases, but you don't, you're not married to them anymore. You just got familiar with them. You just live with them. I know I'm healed in Jesus' name. Based on what scripture? You know, the Bible says I am. Where? It's in there, brother. Okay. Which one? By a stripe, I'm here. Where is that? It's in there. One of John, Matthew, Luke. It's some, it's Revelation's in there somewhere. There's no more connection to it. So I'm going to wrap. I'm not even going to keep going. I think that's enough. And you're like, what? You finish? <laughs> this in it. Huh? Say it again. Yeah. Yeah, he said, I don't understand how deep that is. I do understand it. That's why I'm talking about it. Because <laughs> God got in my face and to- told me how deep it was that I was quoting scriptures that were outdated. The shelf life had expired. So you're saying scriptures expire. I'm saying that, that meaning of it, that deliverance for you of it expired for you. You're living in old things. I'm challenged at this time. I'm challenged at this time. I'm challenged to now relearn again everything I know about the word. I'm challenged to relearn, re- rediscover my walk because my time is not perfect like I thought it was. My flow ain't as great as I thought it was. Yes, God still loves me. His mercy still there. His grace is still there. He's looking out for me. He's covering me. I don't feel like I'm alone. I don't feel like I'm lost in the wilderness. I don't feel confused and lost. And I know everybody in this room pretty much can say amen. amen. We know God is good. We know God is a keeper. We know even when we're faithless, he remains faithful for he cannot deny himself. Listen, I'm a person that knows the word. But there's that time when God said, but you're not spending that time with me to allow me to minister to you, for me to tell you what I'm thinking about you today. It's great that you got a full revelation of your first grade in kindergarten up to fifth grade, walk with me, but now you, you, you're, you're living in the college realm, but you're still living off of your fifth grade education with it. Listen, you're a school teacher. I know I said I'm done, but I just want to throw this last example out. You're a school teacher. And you meet adults as children, adults and children that you've probably had to educate. And I guarantee you, once you get them past fifth grade level reading, people can go on their life and become huge success and never learn the language any better than that. It's, it's, what, it's what you call functional. You become functionally educated. Functionally educated and do very well, go very far in life, just being functionally educated and never want to learn anything else. But if you want to do something different, you've got to learn something you don't know. I'm in my walk, in the place of my walk, after God's conversation with me this week, that I've been living off of some some old victories. I've been standing on some scriptures that worked for me at the season that he wanted them to work. But I need you to get more tools. 
You're trying to go to the next level. Your, your beginner's tool set or even your intermediate tool or your average intermediate tool set, you know, that little all-in-one tool kit you get from Home Depot, that's good for you twinkling around the house. But if you want to become a real cop and if you want to do real work, you got to get some real tools. You have to upgrade that hammer. And there's a difference in hammers. All hammers are not the same. The balance, the swing, the materials, it's a, it's a whole bunch of different things based on how you work. Yeah, you can go buy a Ryobi drill, but if you're doing real work where you're doing a lot of hammer drilling heavy hard all day, you're going to get yourself something better than that. You're going to get a Milwaukee or something that costs $500 for just the one drill, not the whole kit with all the tools you want for um, $69.99. It don't work like that. If you're doing it professionally, you have to have professional tools. Or you're going to be replacing that cheap one every few weeks. Because I've burnt out motors on those things. This is what God is teaching me right now, and that's where I want to wrap it. I believe that he's saying you're teaching them all this stuff about casting thoughts away, but when the enemy starts to challenge you based on these kind of messages, and that's what he's been doing to me. He's been really throwing it up against me. And I'm not a whiner, so I'm not going to get up and say, oh, pray for me. You know, the devil has really challenged me in so many ways. Because I know tears don't move the spirit. He hearkens to his word to perform it. And I know what I need to do is speak the word and stand on the word. So I, you don't know me that know me. You're very rarely hearing me say, would you stand in agreement with me? You don't hear me say that. Not that I'm too good for it, but it's the listen. If I ain't in agreement with it, ain't no sense asking you to stand in agreement. I better be in agreement first. I'm coming to the realization I haven't been in agreement with it. I've, I've accepted it's true. I haven't been in agreement with it. Just like I accepted that when my trainer said age is just a number, that that was the right thing to say, and I agreed with it, but I didn't accept it as true until I saw your father run the bases. Then I was like, okay. Okay, and yeah, you may see people in magazines older than that do more successful things than that, but I saw that with my eyes standing right in the field next to the man. So what I see in a magazine, on a TV, whatever, I saw that. So you can tell your father, he, he inspired me. He inspired me. I was like, next level. I went to the gym this week. I was trying to turn over machines. I'm like, listen, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so... So that was not a joke when I said I want to be like him when I grow up. And I know I ain't a long, long way from that. So I got some catching up to do in Jesus' name. I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for your ears. I want to thank you for loaning me your spirit so I can pour into you what God's pouring into me. I hope it's been a blessing for you. Amen. Amen. I love you. God bless you. I'm out.